Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you how to print on linen or fabric for a luxury linen hardcover book or any other kind of fabric project. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. I created a couple of linen hardcover books in the past and you guys were asking me how I transferred the image onto the linen hardcover as it's directly on the linen. And in this video, I want to show you the two methods that I've used in the past that seem to be successful. Just a little disclaimer here, this is not going to be a book binding tutorial. I'm not going to actually make the hardcover. Uh, you can see how I do that in my previous videos and I'm also going to do a future video about hardcovers. So in this video, the only thing I want to show you is how I actually put the image onto the linen. So as you can see here, I've got two bits of linen and this is kind of a creamish color as you can see. This comes in a big roll. I cut it down to two A4 sheets. Now, just a few things about the fabric because it really matters what kind of fabric you use and how you use it. So first thing first, if you want to make a book or any kind of project that involves glue, you have to use book cloth. And that basically means that here is this linen, but the back side is paper. And this paper is stuck to the linen. It's kind of welded together in a way that if you put glue onto this side of the paper to attach it to a book cover, it's not going to bleed through onto the other side. So you're not going to see dark, wet spots on the linen. And that's a really important thing when you make hardcover books, because if you don't have that backing, it's going to look rubbish and it's going to have stains on it. Now, in order to create book cloth, the easiest thing is to actually buy book cloth because there's so many places you can buy it from, hundreds of different colors. They can come in big rolls or just smaller chunks and you don't have to worry about sticking and gluing, it sticks together very well and it's a good quality paper that doesn't allow glue to seep through. If you're not making a hardcover book or any kind of book and you just want to print on linen for other kind of projects, then you don't need the paper backing, you can just use the, the linen or fabric itself. So that's about the linen. Now the texture doesn't really matter as long as it's fairly smooth, it should work with both uh, methods that I'm going to show you. Now the reason why I cut this down to two A4 sheets because it's much more manageable in the printers and it's not going to be messy and it's not going to cause a jam. So you don't want to put any kind of weird shapes through your printer. If you do the second method, the heat transfer method, then you can use any kind of shape. Now that brings me to the two methods that I want to show you today. One is going to be printed through an inkjet printer and the second one is if you have a laser printer you can do a heat transfer method. So the first one I'm going to show you is basically creating an image in the computer, putting this sheet of fabric into your printer and then printing directly onto the linen. It's amazing results, it looks really good, very good colors, and you don't feel any kind of uh, texture on the linen because there's no extra material ironed onto the linen, it's just the actual ink. The second method is going to be when you have a laser printer and you print on a special transfer paper, and the transfer paper is going to be put on top of the linen and it's going to go into a heat press or you can use an iron if you don't have a heat press and that image is going to be transferred on top of the linen by heat. Now this is a little bit different because you'll feel a subtle change in texture, but it's barely noticeable. So both methods look really good as you'll see. So let's start with the inkjet method. So as you can see, I'm using an HP OfficeJet 7110 printer here. Nothing very fancy, it's a fairly budget-friendly printer. I want to make a huge disclaimer here. So this method is obviously not something that you'll find in the description of any inkjet printer. Printing on fabric is not one of the approved purposes of inkjet printers, so you might lose your warranty if you if you do this with your printer because it's an unsupported media format. But anyway, so I wanted to make this clear that it can cause jams, especially if it's not used properly or if your printer cannot handle thick paper stocks. If your printer can handle 300 GSM or thicker, then it should be okay. And even if you get a paper jam, it shouldn't be anything major. I had paper jams before, but it didn't damage the printer. But this is just one of the, the drawbacks of this method. If you have an expensive printer and you're not sure, I wouldn't try it. If 
you have an average inkjet printer and you have had paper jams before, then you know how to handle them and it should work fairly easily. As I said, the important thing is to cut down the paper to a supported format. So either A3, A4, or if you are in America, letter size, whatever. So here is my sheet, as you can see. And now the important thing about how I cut this sheet is that you can't see any fluff or rough edges. I try to trim off any kind of excess threads anywhere because they can ultimately create uh, a jam in the printer. And you also have to make sure that it's really flat without any crinkles or any other issues on the, on the fabric. Insert my fabric with fabric facing down. So the paper side is facing up and that's what you would do with most inkjet printers, making sure it's a snug fit. And now I'm ready to print. I'm going to use one of the photo paper settings because then the printer is expecting a thicker paper stock. And I'm going to use the same image for both methods, the heat transfer and the inkjet as well. Now regarding the design, just make sure when you set up your printing page on the computer is the same size as the sheet. So I set up an A4 document. I created my design for a photo book cover of Florence. And if you create the same design size as your page, then you'll see exactly what's going to print and how to orientate it on your page. Now, another thing that I have to mention is obviously when you print with any kind of printer and you use different kind of materials, uh, color profiles will play a big role in how the colors are going to look. So again, I'm using a creamish color fabric and I'm using an inkjet. So it took me quite a few trials to get the colors to look as accurate as they look on my screen. I had to work around a little bit uh, saturation, hues and brightness. And ultimately I created a profile that works really well on this specific material. So let's hit print. And here we go, the first print is ready. And you can see it's a very sharp image, beautiful colors, and it dries instantly. And you can feel no difference in the texture on the printed sections than on the non-printed sections. Now let's move on to the second method and let's try to do the same process using a heat transfer method. For the heat transfer method, I have to print out my design first on a transfer sheet. And now for this, you've got multiple options. Some companies offer double sheets, like a sheet A that has to be transferred onto a sheet B. Some of these printers can print white as well. So CMYK and white if you want to print on dark garments or dark fabric. My method here is very simple. I'm using a single sheet transfer and I'm not printing with white toner. So it's just CMYK on bright colored fabric. I'm using this paper from the Magic Touch, which is an A4 TTC transfer sheet. And it gives you uh, guidance on what kind of settings to use in your press, how long, what pressure, what temperature. And it just looks like that, a simple sheet of white paper, and it can only be used in laser printers. So it's very important. You can't use this in any kind of inkjet printer. So let's print out our little design. Now to print out the sheet, I'm using my Xerox C8000 laser printer. Now this one is a huge printer. It weighs like 200 pounds, but obviously you can use much smaller home printers as well. I use this because of the quality and efficiency and speed. So let's print it out. And now here is our transfer sheet. And as you can see, it's a mirrored image. Every time you do any kind of transfer, heat transfer or whatever kind of transfer, you always have to mirror the image. Otherwise it's going to be backwards when it transfers onto the medium. So that's the last step you should do before you print to mirror it or flip it horizontally. Now let's try to transfer this onto our fabric. So as you can see, I'm using a heat press here, but if you want, you can use an iron. If you don't have a heat press, it's just going to be a little bit harder to get the pressure right, the timing and the temperature. Now with fabrics, uh, especially cotton or linen, I find that 180 degrees, uh, it's going to be on the screen in Fahrenheit, is working best. Anything hotter than that is going to create burn marks on the fabric and much lower temperatures are not going to get a very good transfer. 
So if you do use an iron, it has to go on a very high temperature. Now, if you use a heat press, then you can set the temperature, the pressure and the time as well. This one is a very simple heat press. I set it to 180 degrees Celsius and I'm going to do it roughly 20 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds of pressing time. Now, the first time you press it, it's going to be a little bit rough on the top. So you have to use a release paper to make it nice and smooth. So let's dive in. And here is the final result, the inkjet and the laser transfer method. Now, as you can see, they are slightly different in color. And again, that's because it's much harder to control the color profiling in laser printers. And also the contrast is going to be different, but they both look really nice, just a different tone. And as you could see, the the paper doesn't come apart when you use the heat transfer method. That was one of my worries when I first did this, is the backing paper going to peel off, but it didn't peel off at all. So both of these now are ready to be used for book binding or any kind of other project. I hope this was helpful to you to see how I create these linen hardcover books, notebooks and photo books. Once again, please take extra caution when you decide to put fabric through your inkjet printer. Make sure it can handle it and make sure you know how to handle a, a, a paper jam or any kind of jam inside your printer. If you have any more questions about this method, leave them in the comments underneath and I try to answer them. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.